here's a nice little convenient sum table, summary table, and I'm going to have you input some notes in column Z so you have a good reminder to yourself of what they are. Let's take a look at what this does. First of all, we have two sections here. First section is going to be for gap. On a gap basis, how much of this will we deduct? Is a step up to fair market value deductible for gap purposes on the income statement? Again, this is income statement flowing through expenses. Is step up to fair market value deductible? Yes, it is. So you will put a one. Is tax deductible identifiable for intangibles deductible? Yes. All, ident all intangibles aside from goodwill, which is unidentifiable. So goodwill, again, is unidentifiable. All identifiable intangibles, and I'll, again, in column Z, I'm going to give you some examples later, are deductible. Per FASB 142, FASB 141, 142, but 142 in particular, goodwill is no longer amortized for purposes of book gap. So W40, you're going to have a zero in there. Transaction debt financing fees, well, per our LBO module, for sure, that's deductible. We're going to put in the terms here to figure out how many years we want to deduct it by. In the actual amount of our depreciation and amortization, we will take the dollar amount divided by the number of years. And this number is the total depreciation and amortization from the transaction, specifically from the deal, that we will now have to incorporate back into our income statement when we deduct the expenses. All of that, however, is different from our tax, what the government is going to say we need to do. So, for tax basis, tax purposes, step up to fair market value, that is tax deductible. It's as if it was quote unquote asset purchase. Not an asset deal, folks, but an asset purchase as if it was, for instance, through CapEx. By definition, tax deductible identifiable intangibles are also deductible. And by definition, these are not. And again, I'll give you examples. Goodwill and transaction costs are not tax deductible and never will. However, you'll see, I have a comment here that if it's an asset sale, a true asset sale, then it will be deductible. And again, in column Z, I'm going to give you some rules of thumb, and I'm going to tell you for a variety of deal structures. For instance, a pure outright asset deal. If you want to step up 100% of, of your assets to fair market value, and what if you did a 338 or comparable election uh, where you get to deduct goodwill amortization for tax purposes but not for gap, I'll show you all the different options to modify here to get that to work. Transaction debt financing fees, of course, is also deductible. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll set these number of years equal to these. We will not assume as of now an accelerated depreciation schedule. That will be way too uh, outside the potential scope of this right now. And we'll also, again, have our dollar amount divided by these. Or rather, this arrow should really point this way because it's going to be brought down there. So now, let's go to column Z and let me give you some stuff to write in column Z. So I'm going to give you some notes. And in Z37, you can say to yourself, if I have a step up to fair market value, Z37, uh, we'll probably need a few rows here, a few, few cons. What this is, is you want to pretend this is like normal PP&E cap X. And these normal stuff are depreciated. If this is a true asset sale, you'll set this equal to 100%. If this is a true asset sale, you'll set it to 100% because effectively you're stepping up 100% of that. Tax deductible identifiable intangibles. Examples, patents, copyrights, trademarks, non-competes, etc. Your rule of thumb is you will amortize all intangibles, this is for gap, except for goodwill.